Let's make a quick stop here at Bite Me. My Wixen Apple Seedling. And that looks really ready right now. In fact, I think I'm gonna pick that. Look at this horrible autofocus. I mean, can you focus on that? Jeez. Anyway, that's Bite Me. And this one looks very ripe. I think this is probably about as good as it's gonna get, unless it's even too far gone. It also almost looks like it has some water cores. See how this looks translucent? Or it's doing the thing that Wixen does where it goes translucent when it gets super sugary. Oh, and here's another one that actually fell off the tree. Look at that. And these are pretty distinctive, but I'm still gonna label them just in case. Also, when I taste them, I would probably know for sure. Probably for sure. All right, here's my other Wixen seedling, which I tasted in the last apple tasting video. And these seem to be also probably about as ripe as they're gonna get. Um, this one has definitely has a lot of water core. You can see it right here. What a beautiful little apple though, isn't it? And it has all these cracks, like antique looking cracks on it. If I had to guess, I would say it's crossed with King David because my friends who grew this apple grow lots of King David, you know? King David and Wixen are like the two apples he'll usually mention first if you ask him what's good to grow. Okay, this is where we were really headed, the trial seedling rows. And what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna walk through, take some notes, check the apples. I'm gonna mark some apples in case they fall off the tree. I know which tree they fall off of, very important. And I'm gonna clothespin some of them to the tree. So if they break free of the tree, they, instead of falling to the ground, they'll get hung up. So first stop is this uh, seedling between grenadine and gold rush that we tasted in the last tasting video. But I can see now that I actually mislabeled it in that video. All right, it's 11.5. So each one has a unique number, combination number name. We're gonna look for a real ripe one and we're gonna test the bricks, which is the sugar content. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna write down the number GN, that's grenadine, GRS, which is gold rush, GRT is golden russet, 11, which is the year, and five, which is just a random designation for this tree. You know, there's a five and a six and a seven and eight of this particular cross. GN, GRS, 11.5, 2018. It's yellow, round, blush on sun, and dark speckles. This one has a protuberance that's kind of like an, a growth of flesh that comes up and it kind of comes up the stem too. Okay, uh, we've already tasted this apple before and I'm not sure that this is a particularly ripe specimen, but I really just kind of want to get a baseline measure of the sugar. We're going to take it out of the sunny side because that's usually sweeter. Wow, it's very perfumed. It definitely tastes underripe and starchy even more than the last one that I tasted that I picked, you know, a week ago or more. So I got a Brix refractometer and this measures the dissolved solids, which in this case is basically sugar, the same as percentage sugar. And I was able to buy this because of donations to this project, the apple breeding project by Mike from Walla Walla. So everybody thank Mike for pitching in like quite a bit of money to this project. We just wanna smear the juice on there, look through to the light and we are at, ooh, 22. <laughs> Is that right? Almost 22. That's extremely high. Wow. And it's going to get sweeter. Holy crap. Now where did it get all the sugar? That's the weird thing because grenadine is not very sweet and gold rush I don't think of as particularly super sweet either. So who knows? But how cool is this device right here, huh? Well, hopefully that thing's accurate. Um, it's zeroed in fine, so I think it probably is. And it, it tastes that sweet. I mean, it tastes hella sweet, as we say here in NorCal. So that's it for that apple, and we're gonna do the same thing for all these apples, try to get some notes. I'm not gonna take bricks readings on most of these. Most of them aren't ripe. They're not, you know, they're not ready to test or pick or anything. I need to make uh, cultural notes too. Conspicuously green and healthy looking. And I noticed that real early in the season uh, before the, when the fruits were just on. I made an Instagram video about it. Next. First thing of note is it's large. So if I'm not real careful with this, it's gonna fall off. Okay, good news. This is gonna have red flesh, which is from the grenadine parent. I don't wanna pick this, so I'm gonna be real careful here. Hopefully you can see like this is really red, but that's actually like the sun coloration or the pigment on the skin. 
But over here, here, I'm gonna move you guys so you can see it. But look down here, you see how all of this is really pink colored? That's the flesh turning red underneath. And if this is a very red fleshed apple like grenadine, it's quite a bit off from being ripe another three weeks or something before, even four maybe. First things I notice about this are large, faint red streaking. It has the grenadine type of speckles on it. It's very reminiscent of grenadine so far, and it has the pink flesh showing through. This looks like potentially a good one here. All right, this is Gunnardine X Wixen 11, number one. And it looks like I just knocked one of them off. Got to be so careful walking around in here. Yeah, I really don't think this is ripe. There's a lot of green still showing under here. Anyway, let's look at the one I knocked off. Yeah, this is definitely messed up. I mean, why not just taste a piece of it, huh? See, damage. Definitely kind of squishy. It feels like tough, rubbery flesh. Yeah. I don't think this is ripened really correctly, but it's a very tart apple. Even though it's pretty sweet, the tartness just keeps... The flesh and skin are extremely tough, but I just think this is a poor specimen because the skin looks tough and weird on this, and it doesn't look so much so on that one. But I'm still going to guess that that's going to be a tough, hard-fleshed apple, probably thick skin, probably very sweet, or plenty sweet, but with a really high dose of acidity. Should I do the bricks on this? The flesh is tough. I hope this is accurate just squeezing the juice out on here like this. No way, this can't be accurate. This says 24. Maybe it's the solids like when I squish it, like some stuff gets in there, you know? I wonder if I need to maybe filter it or something like that. This one is grenadine crossed with an unknown parent. Doesn't look like it's gonna be a pretty apple, that's for sure. All right, this one we already tasted also in the last uh, tasting video and because one of them had fallen off the tree. And this one was the one that was kind of just a boring yellow apple. I feel pretty sure that this is ripe. Yeah, it's not very scented, but it just looks like it's probably really ripe. Check out those weird red dots around the lenticels. Yeah, I think I'm gonna pick that. Looking at this area right here, it looks a little bit pinkish, um, and it has the grenadine speckling, so that could be a little bit of red blush to the flesh under the skin. I'm gonna save this uh, for the next tasting though, just bag it in the fridge. This one looks right because it's got this yellowing where the sun is hitting it. If you look underneath, it's still quite green there. Lady Wimes is my latest apple. Grenadine is also a uh, late apple. Not super late, but it's definitely late, like into November. So there's a good chance this could ripen extremely late. I mean, it's hard to say. Um, especially the ones that don't have very much streaking have some of that grenadine speckling, but I don't see any other signs uh, that it's going to have a tendency towards having the red flush trait yet. Here's an interesting one. This is a cross between Wixen and Rubiot. It looks a little bit like both of them. It's uh, quite small, but if it's really, really good, who cares, basically? I mean, if an apple is small and amazing tasting, I could care less. If it's small and mediocre, then I care. I posted about this one on Instagram just a few days ago, and it looks pretty intriguing. There were two apples on here, but I knocked one off when I was walking by the other day, so that's in the fridge. Hopefully getting riper, because I don't think this is quite ripe yet. Uh, Wixen's just ripening now, so it's probably going to be co more concurrent with that. Now, if I had to guess, I'm going to say this is going to be very sweet, and hopefully it'll have some of the red flesh trait. That would just be amazing if it had uh, good characteristics of both of those apples. But we'll see soon. This is an example of an apple that I really want to uh, affix to the branch here, so that, you know, there's only one left. Just close pin it on there. That way if it breaks free in the wind or something, or I knock it off, it'll just hang there. All right, this is possibly the apple I'm most excited about this year. It is a cross between golden russet and grenadine. I think grenadine is a seed parent on almost all of these, if not all of them. And you can see it has like a pink blush to it. And that is the red flesh developing under the skin. It looks a lot like grenadine, but the shape of golden russet. And there is some, you can't see it on this side, but there's some russet, uh, quite heavy russet on the other side where the sun is. So I'm hoping with this one, we're gonna get the sugar out of golden russet and also some of the amazing flavor, hopefully. And obviously we already have the red flesh. So if we can get an improvement in texture, you know, there's, there's a lot of things I want out of this and we probably won't get them all, but the idea would be improvement in texture, more sugar, we already got the red flesh, 
and hopefully some extra special flavor from Golden Russet too. I can see quite a few uh, potential fruit spots on here all over the tree, so hopefully this will bear more fruit next year. It's seeming to have some of the negative growth characteristics of Golden Russet, which is like these long, real long bare stems. See how that's all bare and then suddenly there's like a little cluster of spurs. It's a tree that grows really lanky. Someone on growingfruit.org just described it as like a lanky teenager. Unfortunately, unlike a teenager, it never outgrows that phase. See how long these stems are? Now this one here is the uh, same cross, but it's not nearly as pretty. But those other apples look really clean. These all look a little bumpy and scabby maybe. If that is scab, that might be something else. It's starting to get the blush underneath the skin. It's got the same grenadine speckles, the large kind of whitish speckles. Rubiot crossed with pink lady. That's pretty green on the bottom right there. Small, and given that it's a cross between two, it's, it's not a Wixen, let's just say that. If I see a small apple that's across a Wixen, I get excited. Other small apples, I'm not gonna get that excited about, but here's a little uh, messed up bird peck specimen. I might as well bite into it. Whoa, kind of a spitter. It's actually pretty sweet, but there's a lot of tannin and the flesh is real tough. I'm gonna say if this is good for anything, it's gonna be cider. Now that hard flesh, um, hard tough flesh can be a good thing in a cider apple. One of the characteristics that's important in a cider apple, or it used to be even more important before modern pressing methods, that the juice presses easily out of the pulp and the pulp doesn't turn to mushy applesauce when you squeeze it. Okay, that's it for today. I'm running out of light and those are the most interesting ones. There are more up there, but uh, anyone who's not familiar with this project, I'm breeding new varieties of apples. Most of the apples have one apple that's a red fleshed parent. So I'm trying to breed new improved red fleshed apples, but some of the apples are just crosses between two really good dessert apples that don't have red flesh. I have an entire playlist of videos from this project. Uh, there's a lot of videos in there. I'll link that right at the end of this video in just a second. As the season progresses and more of them ripen, we'll be tasting them to see how they are. And I'll probably taste most of them on camera because it's just really interesting to see that process, I think, and see all the, all the results, the bad results and the good results to get an idea of what we're dealing with here. I think I've planted over 200 seedlings, although quite a few of them died, so who knows what I have right now. I need to count that too. So most of them haven't fruited and there's still already some fairly promising results. So I'll see you whenever we get around to tasting these little suckers.